Welcome back. So at this point, we've now seen how to represent positive and negative numbers in a binary representation. And of course, the binary representation is the language of modern computers. So I just want to do a little bit more um, just to make sure we have a really firm understanding of this language, and then we'll start talking about computation. Let me remind you also again that we have different types of binary numbers. We have unsigned binary numbers, where if you have an n-bit binary number, you can represent from 0 to 2 to the n minus 1 positive integers, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. If you have a signed representation, you use the first bit to represent sign. 0 is positive, 1 is negative. But we saw that that leads to some problems, multiple zeros, and uh, bitwise addition doesn't seem to work out. So in fact, we're going to be using 2's complement for negative numbers. 0 in the first place is still positive. 1 in the first place is in the still negative. But the numbers have a different meaning, and we saw that this very nicely in the previous lecture gave rise to being able to do addition with two's complement binary number, and everything works out very nicely. So just to make sure that we're all on the same page here, let's do a couple of exercises. And remember again that whenever I give you a binary number like this, I have to, I have to tell you how it is being represented. I have to say, for example, this is a 4-bit signed with two's complement binary number. Because if I just said it's a 4-bit binary number, it could be unsigned, 0 to 2 to the 4 minus 1. If this was the plus or minus here, then these numbers mean something different. So I always, always, always have to tell you. If I ask you, what is 0, 1, 1, 1 in decimal, and that's all I ask you, you have to say you have not given me enough information. I, you, I need information to be able to decode this. Okay, so if I tell you, that this is a 4-bit signed using 2's complement binary number, what is that number in decimal? Okay, so let's think it through. What do we know about that position? That corresponds to the sign. If it's 0, it's a positive number, and if it's 1, it's negative. And if it's 1, not only is it a negative, but it's in that 2's complement representation, which we have to undo. But if it's positive, I'm home. I actually know what this number is. What is it? It's just Two to the, 1 times 2 to the 0 plus 1 times 2 to the 1 plus 1 times 2 to the 2. So 4 plus 2 plus 1 okay, is equal to, of course, 7. Good. So if the n bit sign 2's complement binary number starts with a 0, it's a positive number, you simply decipher all of the bits after that most significant bit. Now, on the other hand, if it's 1, 0, 1, 1, now we have to do a little bit of work because it's not enough to just take this number and try to convert it because that's not the positive number. All right, so this one tells me it's negative, which means I have to undo the two's complement. All right, how did I get two's complement? I complement, flip the bits, add one. How do I undo? I subtract one and I complement it again. And that's of course, because the complement is its own inverse because when I flip from zero to one, the way I go back is just flip from a one to a zero. All right, so let's do that. Let's subtract 1 from 1, 0, 1, 1. All right, well, if I just put a 1 here and I subtract, that position goes to 0, so I get 1, 0, 1, 0. Let's flip the bits, so the 1 becomes a 0, the 0 becomes a 1, and now I have this. So good, there's a 0 in that position, and if there's not, you've done something wrong. Because when I undo the 2's complement, I better get a positive number. So if that's not a 0, something's wrong. Go back and check your arithmetic. Now, what do I have? I have a positive number that I can decipher in the same way that I just did earlier. 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2. All right, 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the, two to the 1, 2 to the 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So this number, is, as encoded as a 4-bit 2's complement binary number, is, uh, sorry, this number is 5. So this number is, of course, negative 5. Okay, good. So practice that. Make sure you can go between uh, uh, binary numbers and decimal numbers, um, and make sure that you understand how this two's complement with the adding and the subtracting and the complement works. Okay, so at this point now, we have positive and negative numbers. Okay, And we have a couple ways of representing the negative, and we're going to stick with the two's complement from now on. That is the representation we will be using. So obviously, if we're going to do computation, arithmetic, addition, subtraction, division, we need to also be able to encode fractional numbers. 
And I can actually spend a fair amount of time talking about that, but I'm not going to. And instead, I'm going to just mention very briefly how fractional numbers are represented in binary. And the way they're represented is with one, two, three, four, five parts. So there is a mantissa, which is plus or minus, that's two parts. There is the base, and then there is an exponent, which also has a plus or a minus. So two parts for the exponent, the actual exponent, and then whether it's positive or negative, and the mantissa, and whether it's positive or negative, and then a base. So for example, what do I mean by this? If I want to represent uh, 1.0, I would have a mantissa of 1, the base would say be 10, and the exponent would be 0. If I want to do 0 0.1, then this exponent would be minus 1 and so on and so forth. So this is just good old-fashioned scientific notation. And notice why this is nice for representing fractional numbers is because that's an integer, that's an integer, and that's an integer. And I know how to do integers and bit binary numbers. And in fact, I know how to do signed integers, and that's what that. So all I have to do is represent one signed integer, another signed integer, the mantissa and the exponent, and then whatever the base is. And once I've got that, I pack them all together, and I've got fractional numbers. Okay, good. So at this point now, we have enough of a language. There's a little bit more we could talk about, but I'm going to stop here because I want to get into the nature of computation. So at this point, we have the language of modern-day computers, which is binary numbers. And we know how to represent positive numbers and negative numbers and fractional numbers. Okay. And now what we want to start asking ourselves is, how do I do computations? How do I build a calculator? Right? For example, how do I do in Excel spreadsheet add two numbers, subtract two numbers, divide two numbers, do modular di uh, division? And that's what we're going to see next is how do we go from this binary representation to actual computation? And what's going to be really magical here is how incredibly simple it is. There's really only going to be three things we have to learn and three things only, and we're going to be able to build the, the basics of a modern computer. Okay, we'll pick it up uh, in, a, in a few minutes. See you soon.